Hello, future viewers. Welcome to my lightning talk on Below, an interactive resource monitor for modern Linux systems. Before we begin, here's a brief overview of what I'll be talking about. So first, a background, what Below is and why we developed it. Second, some of uh, the features that Below supports. Third, a tour of the user interface. Fourth, comparison to existing tools and how Below compares to them. And then finally, a quick demo showing off what basic operation of Below looks like. So background. So Below is a resource slash system monitor. What that means is Below records information like processes running, C groups active, the names of the processes, the names of the C groups, swap in, swap out, network activity, information like that. Below is designed to replace ATOP. So ATOP is a similar tool to Below, records system information as a daemon, then you can replay it later. Uh, uh, Facebook was a heavy user of ATOP for many years until we re uh, replaced Below. And over the years, we've discovered a number of deficiencies with ATOP that we really couldn't work around. The first is a lack of C-group awareness. So C-groups are a fundamental building block of resources on modern Linux systems and are the canonical way to account for resources and you know, investigate them. Uh, ATOP didn't have that, so we had to you know, implement that somewhere. Second, ATOP also suffered from priority inversions when the host was under resource contention. Uh, this happens for a number of reasons, mostly quirks in the kernel and stuff you have to work around, uh, but it did happen nonetheless. It sort of ties into the third point uh, that the on-disk data has custom delta compression and that if you lost uh, a keyframe, you would lose huge swaths of data. And this ends up being a huge issue because this swath of data that you lose ends up being the most important data you want because you really only want to investigate things if stuff is going wrong, like if resources are being heavily contended. And then the final point, uh, kind of subjective, but it had an, uh, ATOP had sort of an unintuitive user experience. It was hard for new users to figure out how to use it or to look at it. So Below is developed by and for the resource control team at Facebook. Uh, and so it's currently being used every day to debug post more, uh, to do post-mortem investigations on resource outages. Uh, we designed Below with input from major ATOP users, uh, C group slash memory management uh, kernel developers, and container and runtime developers. Uh, we've developed this over a couple of years, so we're pretty confident we're collecting almost all of the important stats on the machine. While we were developing Below, we had a couple of core goals. The first was completeness, the next reliability, and then the third, ease of use. So we want it to be accessible to users. So Below supports a number of features. This isn't a complete list by any means, but so the, the most basic one is information regarding hardware resource utilization. Uh, so these are pretty much table stakes. As a system monitor, you have to record this stuff, otherwise your tool cannot be used to actually debug real issues. The second, issue, uh, second feature is a little more interesting. Uh, there, it supports viewing the C group hierarchy in a tree visualization. And this ends up being a really intuitive way to reason about resources on a system, uh, especially so if you're using systemd, like a lot of Linux systems are. Uh, systemd already arranges the C groups and services in a pretty intuitive hierarchical hierarchy. And then by displaying in a tree form and then reading the names, you can actually intuit a lot of things going on. And then, of course, uh, below supports pressure stall information, a fairly modern Linux uh, statistic, and this gives you an accurate way to uh, reason about how much your services or processes are suffering due to resource shortages. Below supports a variety of uh, operating modes. The first is the record mode. You can think of it like the daemon mode. You, it collects all the system data every couple of seconds, whatever, however you configure it. Interesting to note, Below also records all processes for an interval period, even those that have exited before the collection. Uh, and we do this by uh, hooking into the kernel using an eBPF program and then pulling information out. So you can be sure that Below has pretty fairly complete data. Below also has replay mode. This is the, uh, the terminal user interface client mode. Uh, you can use this to view historical data, and this is the primary interface. Next is live mode. You can think of live mode as the daemon plus client mode. Uh, it just gives you the latest information on the system. Think of it like running top or htop. And then finally, there's a dump sub command. And this is the, uh, the scripting interface. You can script against this interface for, uh, and get output in form of JSON or CSV or readable text. All right, tour of the UI. So when you start below in replay mode, this is the screen you're greeted with. Uh, note that I've collapsed some of the C groups so that all the information fits on the screen currently. I'm going to go from top to bottom and talk about what each part of the UI uh, shows. 
So at the very top, you have the status bar. And this displays information about the data frame you're currently viewing. So for example, this data frame was recorded on the 14th at like a certain time. The elapsed thing tells you how much time has passed since the last data frame. Then there's the build revision, and the version number, and the mode you're in. Uh, not that important, the last couple. Right below the status bar, you have the system overview. The system overview are a collection of stats that we have determined to be important enough to keep fixed on the screen no matter what view you're in. System information like uh, total CPU usage, total memory usage, and a breakdown between you know, anonymous memory and file cache. And then you have some information about the network interfaces and the uh, block interfaces, or block devices, sorry. So below the system overview is what you have. Uh, you have the dynamic view area. So right now, this is the C group view. There are currently two other views. There are a system view, and then there is the uh, process view. And you can switch, them, switch between them using hotkeys. So this view dynamically changes depending on which view you're in. And so the tabs and the data columns can change. At the very top of the C group view, you have resource tabs. And so resource tabs are a way we selectively display information. We, so like we just bucket uh, data we collect into these categories to not overwhelm the user all at once with everything. And you can cycle through these tabs using tab and shift tab. Below the resource tab, you have the data columns. So th these are all the data points that we collect for each C group. Uh, and each column represents a data point. Uh, you can cycle through them to sort, for example, by pressing uh, comma and period. And then if it all doesn't fit on the screen, you can use the scroll bar at the bottom using left and right arrow. So this is a collapsed C group. You can tell it's collapsed because it has a plus sign at the very left. This is an expanded C group. Expanded C group, you can tell that because there's no plus sign at the very left. And you can collapse and uncollapse by hitting enter when you highlight a C group. So now this is the process view. Notice how the tabs have changed and the data columns have changed a bit. That's because we don't collect the same information. The information that's available for C groups isn't necessarily available for processes, and you know, vice versa. Uh, this information should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. You have the thread name, the C group it's running in, the PID, the pro parent PID, uh, you know, the state, and so forth. So comparison. Um, first, I just want to say this is by no means a complete list of alternative tools. This is just some of the tools that we evaluated and uh, looked at. And this is also by no means a complete feature list. This is just some of the features that I thought about and uh, we considered. Uh, I'm not going to go into depth here. You can look at the slides afterwards and do your own uh, research. So demo time. Uh, let's see. All right, first, uh, let's show that below is running on the system. OK, so it's been running for about a week. So it's been collecting data for a while. Now let's replay data from, let's say, 10 minutes ago. And let's see if we can see anything interesting. All right, now we're in the secret view. So the first thing that jumps out to me is the CPU usage is about 158%. Uh, so 1.5 cores are being fully used. Uh, let's collapse all the C groups and see if we see anything else. OK, so it looks like most of the CPU usage is coming from user.slice. Let's expand that and see if there's anything there. All right, so there's a bunch of services in here. It's the user session running a lot of stuff. Uh, to make this easier, let's cycle to CPU by pressing period, and then sort by CPU by pressing shift S. Now that we've sorted by CPU, uh, we can see that the service using the most CPU is OBS, uh, which, which makes sense because that's what I'm recording the talk with. Uh, let's jump over to the process view by using C group zoom, by, uh, which is Z. You press Z, and it displays only the processes running in that C group. Uh, we'll do the same thing again. We'll cycle over to the CPU column, press Shift S, and sort. And yes, the, it looks like the OBS process is using the most CPU. Uh, we can do a deeper dive by tabbing over to the CPU tab. It remains sorted by CPU. And we see that you know most of the time is being spent in user space. And it's 30 threads. Uh, I mean, that sounds pretty reasonable for a video recording software. That stuff is pretty heavyweight. Uh, and as long as we're here, let's go over to the memory tab as well, see if any, see anything interesting. Uh, it looks like it's using about 400 megs of anonymous memory. 
yeah, I mean, that also seems pretty reasonable, not out of ordinary. All right, back to the secret view by pressing C. Uh, now, suppose we sort of know the name of a secret, but we don't exactly know and we don't want to like scroll through it. Uh, we can hit forward slash to do a filter by name. And so suppose we want to find Firefox. We can type Firefox and then below filters only Firefox and then shows the parents so you can see the tree hierarchy as well. And if you press Z, you go back into process view, uh, go over to, let's see, let's go back to uh, general. And we want to sort by CPU. Ah, uh, yes, web content's using the most. That makes sense. I mean, you got to render web content. All right, that's it. Uh, if you want to play with below, we have pre-built Docker images that are you know, being pushed continuously uh, down at the repository. There's information there. So yeah, feel free, uh, feel free to play around below. It's licensed under Apache 2. Uh, file issues if you want. We'll respond to them the best we can. But yeah, thank you.